maybe even if you want to adopt a kid, maybe in like Asia or Africa or India or um, some other country, you know, you have to pay for the plane ticket and it takes so much time and so much effort and so much energy. And if an earthly couple is willing to do that, what about our heavenly father? He would be willing to do even more, right? And so, So God is wanting us right now to embrace that spirit of adoption. He doesn't want us to live in that orphan mentality anymore. We, as a body of believers, need to accept that we belong to Jesus and that we belong to God and that we are his own child, that he actually cares about us so much and that um, he has the best for us because he's our father and he's amazing and he just loves us with this unending love. And um, let's open up to Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 6. Song of Songs is just a great book. Um, it's also called the Song of Solomon. And it just talks about the love um, that God has for his bride. And especially love this verse. It's probably one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And it's Song of Solomon or Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 6 through 7. It says, Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for your love is as strong as death, its jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench this love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. This bride in this chapter understands um, the love of the Father. She understands that the Father God wants to place her as a seal on his arm. So it's like a physical sign. You know, it's something that is made manifest. It's like a tattoo. Like, if you have a tattoo, everyone can see it, right? If you place it on your arm or if you place it somewhere visible, everyone can see it. And so um, when she says, place me like a seal over your heart, it's like, God, you have a tattoo with my name on it or with my face on it. And, um, and it says also, place me like a seal over your heart. And so it's like inside. She understands that God's love is not just um, physical, but it's also emotional. It's inside of him. It's, um, it's something that comes from the inside out. It's like from the heart to the flesh. And um, she also says, for, your love, for love is as strong as death. It's jealousy and yielding as the grave. All she wants is to be with him. All she wants is to commune with him, is to just be with her creator, to be with her husband, to be with who she was meant to be, her main lover. And it burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. And that's just so beautiful to me. Like, that's how great her love is for God because she understands that God loves her so much, that her husband loves her so much, that her father loves her so much. She understands that she has been adopted into this family and that God has chosen her. And because of that, because God loved her first, she can love God with this passion. It's not just a love. It's not just a friendship love, but it's a passion. You know, it's like this, um, this husband and wife passion when they first get married or when they first started dating. It's like this passion they never want to be um, let go of. Like, I had this friend who, um, it was like her first boyfriend, her first real boyfriend. And um, whenever I call her, you know, hey, do you want to hang out or do you want to, whatever. She's like, no, I'm with my boyfriend, you know. And I'm like, but I haven't seen you in like two years, you know. And you're in town, so let's hang out. And she's like, no, I think I'm going to stay with my boyfriend. And they meet every single day, you know. And it's like that passion once we have been adopted into the kingdom of heaven we, and we understand the love that the Father has for us, we 
receive that passion. We're supposed to have that passion that stirs up inside of us, that fire where we want to meet with God every single day, where we accept the things that God has for us because, because it's, we understand his love, because we understand that it's genuine, that it's true, that it's, um, it's not fake. It's not like, um, like an earthly love where it can be fake or it can turn on and off sometimes, but God's love for us is always on. It's always there. And we need to just realize that He's passionate for us as his children. He is passionate to be in a relationship. And um, he is passionate to be the center of who we are. Just like Moses said that God is a jealous God, he's jealous for his children. He wants us to be with him all the time. And also, I talked to you about Sozo and how I'm in this ministry and um, this ministry is, um, Sozo is actually Greek for um, saved, healed, and delivered. And it's used in the Bible uh, many times. And um, in this ministry, um, what we focus on is inner healing and how um, we, as a body, we need to, many times we listen to the lies of the devil. We listen to the lies that people speak to us. And sometimes we believe it. And sometimes um, it just stays in who we are. And so many times, um, because of those lies, our image of God is screwed up. Our image of Jesus or the Holy Spirit or the Father God is screwed up. And um, we can't accept everything. And sometimes we build up walls because of those lies um, or because of the hurt and the pain in the past. Many times we build up walls to protect ourselves. And that's because that's our natural instinct as as humans, um, when someone hurts us, we try to protect ourselves right. And so um, the purpose of this ministry is to break down these walls, to um, find the truth in these lies, and to, um, to just be able to have a full understanding of who God is, what he thinks of us, who our identity is, and um, a part of the sozo process is forgiveness. And um, when, we, when we want to embrace that spirit of adoption, we need to learn how to forgive our earthly father. Even though maybe t he isn't there all the time for us, maybe he's hurt us in the past, but if we really want to accept that spirit of adoption, we need to learn to forgive. And forgiveness doesn't justify the wrongs that our father did towards us. Forgiveness doesn't say that he's right and we're wrong or that um, it's okay that he did it. But forgiveness is for us. And forgiveness comes out of the love of the Father. And um, without God's love, we're not able to truly forgive. And so, um, you know, forgiveness breaks chains. And it's for us because it breaks chains. It breaks all the bondages, all the ties that we have. Um, it breaks down like our chains to insecurities, our chains to fears, our chains to addictions. It, um, it brings freedom. When we forgive people, it's like a burden's been lifted. It feels like something has been lifted and that we have total freedom now, that, we, um, that it's okay that he did it because we have something that's even greater. And... Um, when we are able to forgive our debtors, we are opened up to God's wonderful plan. And we release ourselves from the bitterness, hurt, anger, grief that has bound us and that has not allowed us to walk in that light, to walk in that truth. And again, forgiveness is for you and it's not for the other person. And um, when we learn to forgive, our earthly father, then we are able to receive everything that our heavenly father has for us. When we um, release our earthly father from all the hurt, all the pain, all the 